Hi guys, my name is Athena Island. We are talking about AI products. Uh, today we are still in London and I invited Adam. He is an influencer and CEO and founder at DLS company. He will tell us everything about his product. Hi Adam. Hello. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Cheers Adam. It's wonderful. You? <laughs> it is indeed. This is, uh, we're at Bocan in the Nova Hotel on the 38th floor mm -hmm. in uh, Canary Wharf, which is the financial centre of, uh, which is the financial centre of, uh, well, pretty much Europe. Mm -hmm. And we've got a big fintech up here called L39 mm -hmm. in the main, main mm -hmm. centre. Yes, it's amazing. <laughs> but, um, Revolut, the uh, startup, fintech startup is down the road from here. Ah, oh, yes, by the way, I know about them. Well, let's talk about you. Yeah, sure. About so, your background. Thank you. Yes. So I'm a former executive director of Morgan Stanley. Mm -hmm. I left and went back to college, did a couple of masters, London Business School and a master's in computer science, mm -hmm. where I specialized in AI, artificial intelligence, with research in deep learning and machine learning. And uh, I've created a startup called DLS, Deep Learning Strategies. And we work pr predominantly with deep learning technologies. So things like deep neural networks and convolutional neural networks, long short term memory units, recurrent neural networks, mm -hmm. GANs, and uh, deep reinforcement learning across different sectors. Wow, that's amazing. Sounds amazing because you, you were an executive director and you know so deep the technology itself. It was a big, it was a big shift, um, but I saw this area as something I was very passionate about, mm -hmm. something that's going to change the world and uh, it's going to be the entire future. Mm -hmm. and so that's why I made that transition. So talking about AI and its impact to all industries, can you tell me what will be the main thing for this technology? I believe we're still actually in the relatively early stages in terms of global scaling. So far, we've seen the technology majors such as Google, the social media giants such as Facebook, um, and, and, and companies like Amazon, GAFA as they're called, really taking the lead with the big data sets. Mm -hmm. I believe the big game changer is going to come with 5G and edge computing, mm -hmm. in particular as we go into 2020 and beyond, mm -hmm. and 5G rolls out. And we're going to get intelligence coming away from the cloud into devices all around us, mm -hmm. into your mobile, into smart cameras, into sensors, all the giant amounts of data that are going to get created. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave machine learning and deep learning to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. And our devices will become intelligent, like autonomous cars, autonomous robots, autonomous drones, mm -hmm. and we'll interact with them, and machine-to-machine -machine communication. Mm -hmm. Okay, I noticed that you brought a box. Yes. What is inside? Can you tell so me? So can I bring it over? Sure. Yeah. So. This is an example of um, where we're going to. It's a GPU called the mm -hmm. NVIDIA Jetson TX2. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of thing that brings intelligence, the GPU, on the device. Mm -hmm. uh, if you strip off the motherboard, you can put it on a, on a drone. Mm -hmm. It can be used in autonomous robots. Mm -hmm. You can do object detection, autonomous navigation with it. Mm -hmm. And so it shows, this is an example of deep learning that will no longer be on the cloud, mm -hmm. purely on the cloud, but also on the device itself. And the devices will communicate with each other, mm -hmm. with machine-to-machine -machine communication. Mm -hmm. So two autonomous cars don't crash into each other mm -hmm. and they can make collective decisions together. Yes, and we already discussed yes, with sir. you that uh, Google also already did this, right? On this phone, on, on your yes, phone? Yes, so, so increasingly we're starting to see with the new Pixel phones and the new iPhones that will come out, mm -hmm. uh, neural networks coming onto the device, more powerful chips mm -hmm. designed to enable edge computing. It's going to be on smart cameras around us, all the sensors around us, so healthcare will get heavily disrupted. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to do biosensing, real-time data, more mm -hmm. or less. Uh, uh, an ambulance or a fire crew can get um, real-time interaction with the emergency scene even before they get there mm -hmm. and whilst they're there. Mm -hmm. um, areas like um, um, uh, insurance will be heavily disrupted. You'll be able to detect that something's wrong in your house before it happens, mm -hmm. that a pipe is going to burst before it happens, and mm -hmm. make an intervention mm -hmm. before it occurs, reducing costs, reducing risk. Mm -hmm. So the question is about your own company. Uh, are you doing B2B sales? So we've tended to work with uh, a number of different projects, manufacturing with predictive analytics, mm -hmm. um, energy sector, and indeed, in particular, retail and healthcare, mm -hmm. two areas that we've been heavily involved in. Mm -hmm. um, looking at medical imaging, looking at drug discovery with deep learning, mm -hmm. but also areas like uh, bringing hyper-personalization to the retail sector, mm -hmm. combining deep learning with NLP, natural language processing, mm -hmm. so you can get to a very personalized experience for the customer, and helping bridge that gap between digital, like mobile, 
mm -hmm. a physical store, bringing the two together mm -hmm. in the future. Yes, but before we go uh, deeper and uh, learn more about your product, can you please tell me how to, you know, um, help companies to um, to um, how to say it? Uh, <laughs> God, uh, I need to. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, AI adoption. So sure, how sure. to? Uh, how, how do companies get involved? Or how? What are the barriers they face? Okay. So yes. What, what are the challenges to adopt AI? Uh, yes. Uh, so, um, or how can we widen this market, right? Yeah. So, how can yes. we, yeah. How how will the market? Yeah. How yes. will the market accelerate and scale? Yes. Okay. How will we scale up the market? Okay. So the question is, uh, how can we scale AI market and help companies to um, adopt AI technologies more? So Athena, that's a very good question. And um, I think a big challenge for many traditional corporates has been the data, making sure they've got sufficient data and they're capturing it correctly mm -hmm. and that they're cleaning it correctly. Mm -hmm. The other problems that we've tended to see is solving the right problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the data science team is not aligned with the, the commercial team mm -hmm. and the data science team will work on the wrong problem, solve the wrong problem, and you lose one year solving something that no one needs help yeah, exactly. on. Mm -hmm. The other thing is having the right talent internally. Data science is still a relatively scarce resource. And finding the right people, training them correctly, mm -hmm. making sure they integrate correctly, and that they're led correctly. So increasingly, we need to make sure that the data science team mm -hmm. is talking the same language as the marketing team and the finance team and, and, and others, the logistics yeah. team, that there's an understanding between the head of data science mm -hmm. versus the head of marketing, et cetera, mm -hmm. that they're talking in the same direction to solve the same problem. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if they're talking at each other and not understanding each other, mm -hmm. they won't solve the right problem. So that's a key part of it, as well as understanding data. Mm -hmm. Google, Amazon, Facebook understand the data and their technology is a revenue generator, not just a cost base. Yes. Traditional corporates view this investment in data infrastructure as a cost and don't see the revenue potential, and that also has to change. I think that uh, every single uh, executive director should repeat these words day by day, every day, <laughs> and learn it by heart. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's a mantra. Every, everyone should know that. I also believe, though, that's why I keep on mentioning and stressing the changes that 5G will bring. Mm -hmm. It's not as simple as going from 3G to 4G. It's a very, the technology will be much more disruptive. Technologies such as augmented reality and virtual reality that have struggled with 4G due to latency and also autonomous systems that need faster on-device uh, and machine-to-machine -machine, uh, computational capabilities mm -hmm. will all be using 5G. And therefore, edge computing will grow. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be the hybrid solution between using the cloud for, for data storage, data lakes, and training on the cloud, but inferencing on the device mm -hmm. with deep learning and machine learning. Mm -hmm. And the way the nature of customer interaction is going to change with AR and VR alongside deep learning being and computer vision going onto that mm -hmm. and, and recurrent neural networks being used for time series analytics. All of this is going to change and come all around us. Mm -hmm. So companies will have no choice. They're either going to adopt or disappear. And we're probably going to see a lot of startups that have been growing right now for the last one or two years really starting to step into that gap. Mm -hmm. They'll be the first ones to adopt and, and, and scale in this changing world. Mm -hmm. And when you think of uh, things like um, how the, the abacus and the slide rule, they disappeared when the calculator came out. All those companies disappeared. Mm -hmm. This will be the same. It's like the Industrial Revolution. The steam engine disappeared as, as newer and newer technologies came out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the boats used to use sail ships, Cutty Sark and Green and Greenwich is down the road, and it became redundant. The fastest sail ship in the world became redundant when steamship came out. Mm -hmm. Just like with this technology, with 5G and edge computing, it will make all these old technologies redundant very quickly. Yeah. So adopt AI or, AI or disappear. Yes. So thank you. Let's come back to your product. And tell me, please, uh, what is the market? Where do you, uh, try, where do you go uh, and sell it? That's first. And second, uh, the value to businesses and to normal people. Can you just... So a lot of our efforts so far have been collaborative, working on consulting projects. Mm -hmm. But we have our, uh, we've done a lot of our own proprietary work in areas like healthcare, mm -hmm. working with hospitals on developing medical imaging, putting it on the edge on things like Jetson so that it can be embedded into, into an MRI uh, or x-ray machine. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also been doing um, work with drug discovery in the pharmaceutical sector mm -hmm. uh, and also 
increasingly in the retail sector where we want to change that whole interaction with the customer, mm -hmm. hyper-personalization, because retail is dying. Mm -hmm. um, day after day, week after week, we hear of one retailer after another mm -hmm. going into losses or even disappearing. Forever 21 has filed for bankruptcy protection in the US. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest brands out there. One brand after another is struggling, and we see the fact that with AI and 5G and the related computer vision technologies and AR, we can completely change the customer interaction and bring these technologies into the store mm -hmm. and modernize them, change the whole interaction. We can also make them cleaner. Climate change is a big issue right now mm -hmm. around the world. Retail is highly wasteful right now. A lot of the inventory doesn't sell, it gets dumped or it gets shredded. Um, there's a lot of wastage in the supermarkets with fridges and freezers. A lot of that can change. We can make the whole journey far more efficient and more climate friendly mm -hmm. and, and more relevant to the, the customer. Mm -hmm. Right now, when a customer steps into a store, the store doesn't know anything about them. Mm -hmm. And they're snooping, they're, they're monitoring them. Customers don't feel comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. They want a pull factor not, uh, that, that, drags, that, that attracts them in. Mm -hmm. And an, a digital engagement that hyper personalizes rather than just spying on them. So I think that's where we're going to go to. Technologies that help the customer, mm -hmm. that personalize the offerings to them, that make the journey more useful in this world of 5G as they walk and interact with the physical store and the physical world. Mm -hmm. That's the big game changer we're going into and that's going to push AI adoption everywhere. As that volume of data that the IoT, the Internet of Things, is going to generate, mm -hmm. we need machine learning, we need deep learning to make sense of it mm -hmm. and, and make that data relevant to the customer. Mm -hmm. AI is here to stay. Okay, so thank you very much. And the last question will be, um, um, I want you to wish something to those executives who are starting or already doing business and they trying to uh, adopt AI technology. So. So, so Athena, that's a very important question and a very good point. When you come into this field, although it's moving very fast, start simple. Start with the basics. Look at data. Make sure your data structure is correct, that you're capturing it correctly. Mm -hmm. Build a team, or if you're working with people externally, that's collaborative, whether your internal people are trained appropriately, and make, try and get people who can understand each other, who mm -hmm. can speak the same language, and start with easy wins. Don't try and create uh, AlphaGo on the most complex deep learning systems or deep reinforcement learning right from the outset. Mm -hmm. Start with easy wins, easy machine learning projects that prove the concept and then start to scale from there. Um, so uh, low hanging fruit and then move to the next level. Gain with confidence and complexity and, 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 and show that you can deliver value and measure your base case. Mm -hmm. Understand where you are today without the data uh, structures and machine learning that are needed, mm -hmm. understand what the problem is and the cost, and then see when you put in the machine learning, how much does it improve it? So you've got a base case to work from, mm -hmm. and you can measure and evaluate. Data science machine learning should all be based off being able to evaluate something, a goal, and what the performance is along the way, so you can keep on fine tuning and improving from there. Okay, so, and summarize, <laughs> don't use technology for technology and do business in AI. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, easy wins out there. It's about understanding the problem, working in a business-focused environment. Um, yes, a lot of AI research is very theoretical, but a lot of it also has real-world applications. And it's about understanding the problem you face as an organization. Mm -hmm. What is the priority? Where should the resources go? Making sure you've got the data and, and finding ways to apply uh, solutions that add value to your company and to your customer. At the end of the day, the more wins you score for the customer as well, the better it is for you. Thank you, Adam, very much. You're welcome.